welcome to this edition of U Central Sports. I'm Jaden Ford. And I'm Keewon Neal. Central football was back in action on Saturday when they hosted the annual spring game. Unfortunately, the game was called off due to weather concerns after about an hour, but UCO's Chris Brannick feels that the event was still a success regardless. So we knew it was on the radar, um, and we didn't want to jump the gun. We kind of wanted to wait and see. We, were, we, we did have a baseball game earlier. So they had uh, camp before noon, they had junior day at 3 o'clock, and if you want to move the game up, now you're going to affect those things. And so as to not mess the entire day up, we said, let's just roll with it. Let's go with it. Let's see how far we can get. We've got the camp. We've got the, the junior day. And we got both those in. Those were very successful in our eyes. And then we got a little bit of the spring game in. So uh, it wasn't a complete loss. We hate, to, we hate to ask fans to leave. That's the worst thing for us. Uh, you never want to say, hey, sorry, folks, we're shutting it down. Um, but we got a we got a we we got a lot of stuff accomplished today, and I think I think they're pleased with that. And, and you know, sometimes uh, sometimes the weathermen miss, and sometimes they don't. They they didn't today. I think everyone knew it was going to be kind of this this kind of a day. So uh, you know, sometimes you just got to go with it and see what happens. Well, you hate to see the weather affecting events like that on campus, but thankfully everyone was able to leave before the storms got too bad. And switching over to the baseball diamond, the UCL baseball team finished up three their regular season last week by taking two of the three over Emporia State. The Chos ended the season 29 and 19, good enough for the fourth spot. The Chos will take on Washburn in the 2022 MIAA Baseball Championship here in Edmond. It will be a best of three series with the winner advancing to next weekend's Final Four double elimination. Those games will also be hosted here in Edmond from May 12th through the 14th. The last time UCO and Washburn met on the diamond, the Chos took two of the three from the Ichabobs. The Chos will be looking to re repeat the pass while surviving and advancing. The Broncos softball team is headed to the MIAA tournament today. The Broncos finished the regular season 233, ranking fifth and securing them with the second seed in the eight-team double elimination tournament. The team as a whole had a heck of a season, but four specific ladies are also making headlines. First, shortstop Brighton Gilbert was named the MIAA Defensive Player of the Year. Gilbert, as well as pitcher Kylie Lynch, catcher Amelia Huggins, and outfielder J.C. Minter, all named to the first team all MIAA honors. The Broncos take on Nebraska Kearney tonight at 6.30 p.m., first round game at Gary Pickens Stadium. Central Oklahoma was just selected as the number one seed in the NCAA Division II Women's Tennis Championship Central Region. Central Oklahoma will host half of the six team Central Regions at Edmond Center Courts this weekend. The two advancing teams from each regional will head to, the floor, will head to Florida in two weeks for the NCAA Division II Women's Tennis Championship Round of 16. The Bronchos are 20-1 this season. UCO has won 14 in a row, including a perfect 8-0 record in the conference. The Bronchos won the MIAA regular season title and then dominated in the MIAA postseason tournament going 3-0 to win the title. UCO men's golf heads to Indiana for the Midwest Super Regional this week. UCO's team is coming off a fourth place finish at their last tournament in the MIAA championship. UCO had consistent scoring all the way through with all players shooting in the 70s, but none failing to do anything exceptional. They will be trying to right the ship this week as they play Purgatory Golf Club today through this next Saturday and Brinley Linehan has the update about the UCO basketball team. The University of Central Oklahoma men's basketball team is coming off a very strong season. The Broncos were named the MIAA champions and also made the school's first national tournament appearance since 2011. The Broncos finished the season 24-7 and, and are looking to reload for next season after adding former Tulsa Hurricane guard Curtis Haywood II. Prior to Tulsa, Haywood played two seasons for the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, making over 20 starts for both teams. Coach Bob Hoffman says he's very excited to have Haywood on the team and that he's someone who can have an immediate impact on both sides of the ball. Haywood is from Mustang and was a part of the 28-0 basketball team that went on to win the state championship. Haywood will join Central Oklahoma for the 2022-2023 season. Back to you guys at the desk. This past week, Inside Broncho Sports reporter Tyler Lursch took a look at one of UCO's newest additions in the sports venue, the Co-op Gaming Arena. Let's take a look. The Co-op Gaming Center is just across from UCO's campus has been around for about two years. 
Ty Wallace, a co-op esports coach, talked about the beginnings of the center, as well as its foundation in student-led clubs. So, UCO Esports came to be in around, I want to say, 2020, about, but esports at UCO started in 2018. Uh, that was the name of the student org, um, and that started because kind of actually two separate clubs started and then they eventually merged into one big club um, and that club had a lot of traction like almost immediately our first meeting had like 50 people in uh, Rad Radkey Theater in the CTL um, which is kind of unheard of for a you know student organization. As the organization grew in size so does its popularity with UCO. In late 2020 the co-op gaming center was opened officially Members of the UCO gaming community then formed some of their own teams and were able to compete both locally and nationally. Um, so for the teams that we have currently, we have Overwatch, Rocket League, Call of Duty, Super Smash Bros, uh, and Valorant. If any UCO students would like to try out for a team, create a new team for a game not already on the competition roster, or sign up to play locally in tournaments, you can visit the Co-op Gaming Arena and speak with the UCO Esports admin board. Any team can basically form show up, come to me or Ben, the other coach, and be like, hey, there's an esports scene here, and we're ready to compete in it, and I'd gladly accept you. That's how the student organization worked, too. Essentially, you would come and present to the student org admin board, uh, basically show the collegiate scene, show us that you have somewhere to compete, um, and then we'd kind of get going. From the Co-op Gaming Arena, I'm Tyler Lersch inside Bronco Sports. And coming up after the break, Inside Broncho Sports sits down with some of the rowing team to talk about their season. Last week, some of our Bronco sports crew got the chance to talk with some of the UCO rowing team. Let's take a look. So, I had never heard of rowing. Like, I started sophomore year of high school. Um, so, just being out there and starting a camp and, like, you know, seeing how rowing, like, is, it was very, it was very new to me at first. But once I started and I, like, figured out, like, wow, like, this is awesome. Like, this is something I want to be a part of. A big thing was like the team aspect, like you're a family, you know, each one of you are going through the same exact thing and you're not doing it alone. You have someone right beside you or behind you, you know, doing the, pushing you, doing your best. And it's something that you have to be very dedicated to. It's obviously not an easy sport, but just knowing that you're 100% committed and you're all on the same page and you all have the same common goal. That's what gets me up in the morning, knowing that, okay, I'm going to put in my 100% and my teammate is going to do the same. And just working towards that goal of like, okay, we want to win another championship, that's, that's what gets me up. It's like, okay, what am I doing? How can I be better? How can we progress as a team? Kind of piggybacking off what my twin said, um, we played volleyball in high school, we did track and cross country, we did cheer for a little bit. 
So I had never heard of rowing. And so when my mom um, had mentioned it to us, like her boss, her daughter, she had been rowing for a while. And then when she met us, she was like, your daughters look pretty tall and athletic. They should try rowing. You know, you can get really easy scholarships for rowing um, compared to all the other sports, which are so competitive. And so we were like, OK, we'll be open-minded and optimistic and just try it out in a summer camp. And so we did. And um, we really enjoyed the team, the coach there at the time. And then we really progressed our first year of rowing and made it to nationals as novices, which is very uncommon as well. And so that kind of pushed us to the fact of like, OK, like, Maybe we could do this in college. And um, so ever since then, um, it's really been cool to learn and have discipline, commitment, and just having that drive to get up every day and going to a hard sport, which you know is not going to be easy. But I do think being an athlete in college really helps us learn how to manage our time wisely. Um, I know we're both RAs here at the school, too. So we have that job plus being an athlete in school. And so I think it's just this year really learning how to have better time management and be disciplined. And I think us learning all these things now is what's going to help us be strong women in the future. I think for me, uh, rowing was the one sport that I didn't have to quit because of my size. It was the one sport that everybody was like, oh, you'd be the perfect coxswain for because you're small. Um, so when I started it, I was like, oh, and I'm loud and bossy. So <laughs> it's the perfect thing for me. So I think that's just been my kind of my why is because it's the one sport that I never had to feel like I couldn't do um, because it's not every for me it's not the physical aspect it's the fact that I can get in a boat and you know help them get better every day and the mental of having to know what to say to them even when I can't always even see the stroke like there's so much to learn as a coxswain that it's just been tough but it's I, I also learn something new every day. Um, like I said before, I had played basketball for a while and I wanted to go for basketball ultimately, but uh, because of my size and my strength, I was a post in high school, but I wasn't gonna go anywhere as a five, six post to college. So my mom's like, what can we do to help you? So my mom had done some research. She's like, rowing sounds like a great option. Like, what the heck is rowing? Like, can you please explain? Like, I don't know. It's not a comma sport. <laughs> no, like what? Um, and so she looked it up. I got, I did a summer training camp um, at a lake nearby. And I just did it one day. And I was like, well, this is actually kind of fun. And I just thought it was fun. I didn't know that it was hard. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I'm just going to cruise along. Like, cool. And then once I got into it and once I got to college, I'm like, wow, this is really hard. Like, this is a, took a toll on me, you know. Um, but I just, for me, I love getting to get better in different things and just having that grit every morning, like pushing through because I'm known to be a very strong, independent woman. I also think it's pretty cool when someone asks, because they know if looking at me, I could see that someone could say like, I'm an athlete, but they're like, what sport do you play? And they would guess either like soccer or something like that. And I was like, I'm a rower. They're like, you're a what? <laughs> I was like, I'm a rower. And they're like, what is that? <laughs> and I was, so it's just cool to be like, an, not an ordinary sport. It's very different, and I like like that. And telling them that I'm a national champion is crazy too, because they're like, I was only a freshman last year. Like I did that, you know. So it's just really cool to see people's reactions and stuff too. So one thing that I always think about is like, you're never gonna hit that like perfect rowing stroke. Like you're always learning each day how to do better and how to learn how to move a boat faster. But it's something like you're always growing. You're never like just stagnant in one spot. It's something that you learn each day and you keep going, but you always are learning something new. It's not like I've reached the top and this is where I'm gonna stay, if that makes sense. And our very own Garrett Hallsworth sat down with head coach of the UCO track team and talked about how they overcame their own challenges here at home. Let's take a look. It was good, no? When it comes to collegiate sports, I'll bet track and field skipped your thoughts. But it's okay, because these throwers don't skip any work. In fact, their dedication is more impressive than others. Our team does not have an on-campus facility, and so we have a lot of different locations that we, we practice. 
So we're the only large NCAA women's team that doesn't have an on-campus um, facility, and so that, that causes challenges. That's right. The team mostly practices in the upper level of Hamilton Fieldhouse and Cheyenne Middle School here in Edmond. Otherwise, the team is forced to get creative. We throw the weight throw on the driveway behind the SPC, and essentially we are having to wait for baseball players to walk right through the middle of practice because they have their indoor hitting facility right next to where we throw in an empty field off a driveway. And we also have to wait through traffic to drive over our ring that we draw on the ground in chalk. I'm sure you can already tell their resources are limited, whether it be a lack of throwing apparatuses or even a facility itself to work in. But what kind of hurdles does this cause day to day? We have kids that have to practice at different times. Um, we've had to cancel practice. Um, it stops momentum. You know, sport is all about momentum, especially when you get into the championship season. So when you come off a meet, when you come off a good practice, you want to keep building on that. And if it's disrupted by anything, especially in our case, facilities typically, um, it causes a problem. It causes a step back and you've got to regain momentum. So to me, it's more of a momentum problem most of the time. Despite those challenges, since Dr. Brennan became coach in 2009, she's broken every record except for four. She remains humble, though, because it's bigger than accolades. I feel like I've done a great job with um, leading women, and I've been, I've picked an industry where there's very few women. And in fact, in this department, I've been the only female head coach for a number of years. I'm the only female head coach in the MIAA currently. So I, I pride myself on what that role is and what it can do for young women. At the end of the day, her impact is a vital part of the team, but she doesn't just want to stop there. You know, I'm just a really big fan of what UCO is and what UCO is all about. And we've recruited so many student athletes just based on coming here as a student. So I just feel like my, my role here can be so much bigger than what it currently is. From Hamilton Fieldhouse with Inside Bronco Sports, I'm Garrett Holsworth. And still to come, Brady breaks down the NBA playoffs and what teams are moving on. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Bronco Sports. The NBA playoffs are in full swing as the conference semis continue to feature some great basketball. Out in Phoenix, the Suns have just been too much to handle for the Mavericks so far. Despite Luka Doncic dropping a game-high 35 points on the night, the Suns' tandem of Devin Booker and Chris Paul combined for 58, leading Phoenix to the 129-109 victory. The series moves back to Dallas tomorrow night as the Mavericks look to avoid falling 3-0. Tip-off is set for 8:30. The other game last night was set between the Heat and the 76ers as one team continues to roll. Miami is still overpowering an embedless Philadelphia team. The South Beach trio of Butler, Adebayo, and Hero combined for 73 points on the night, while James Harden continues to do his best James Harden impression by not showing up in the playoffs once again. But hey, at least he's not Ben Simmons, right? Tyrese Maxey did his best to keep the Sixers in it, dropping 34, but the Heat were just too much, winning 119-103. Philly will look to get its first win in the series as it moves back home tomorrow night. As for the other two playoff matchups, Golden State and Memphis continue to battle it out. 
John Morant is on another planet right now, averaging over 40 a game in the series, while Steph Curry is finally back to being his old self after the late season ankle injury, putting up over 25 a game. Both teams will look to break their 1-1 series tie as play resumes this Saturday. In the East, the Bucks and Celtics are also tied 1-1. Best player in the world, Giannis Antetokounmpo, is leading the way for Milwaukee, posting 26 points an outing. But the duo of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum has been hot this postseason. They come off a combined 59 points in the Game 2 outing. They also play Game 3 this Saturday. Postseason's been a good one, and it looks very likely to stay that way. Guys? Tuesday of this week marked the first day of the Stanley Cup playoffs in the NHL. The 16 teams in the finals faced off in their respective regions. Yesterday in the Eastern Conference, the Penguins prevailed over the Rangers. The Capitals beat the Panthers. The Hurricanes swept the game with the Bruins, and the Lightning stole the show against the Maple Leafs. In the Western Conference, the Avalanche beat out the Predators on Tuesday. The Flames appeared too hot to handle for the Stars. And yesterday, the Wild howled at the moon. The Blues played the Blues with the score of 6-2 to two in the Wild's favor. And finally, the Oilers found their, their stride against the Kings after their first game and shut out the Kings when they all came down to the end. Be sure to look out for the heat on the ice this Friday as the playoff games continue. Let's go over to the other anchor, Patrick, who has an update on MLB. Patrick? Thanks, Jaden. That's right. And let's go ahead and see what's going on in the big leagues this week. The Brewers' Rowdy Tellez matched 884 feet worth of home runs last night, including this grand slam. That's a big man swinging the bat real well for the first place Brewers right now. And as Frank Sinatra says, start spreading the news. The two New York teams are doing really well right now as both teams are in first place in their respected divisions. The Mets are 18-9 with a run differential of plus 31, and that's without the best pitcher in baseball, Jacob deGrom. The Yankees are 18-7 with a run differential of plus 49, and former Chicago Cub Anthony Rizzo has proven to be a spark for the Yankees as he's tied for the league lead with nine home runs and 21 RBIs on the early season. And in other news, Trevor Bauer, a starting pitcher for the Los Angeles Dodgers, is facing a 324-game suspension for Major League Baseball. Bauer has been on administrative leave since last July, around July 2nd, and the suspension comes as a, a result of Bauer allegedly violating the league's domestic violence policy. The suspension is two years' worth of games. It means that the Dodgers are not going to have to pay Bauer's contract that they agreed with him. Bauer has denied, quote, committing any violations of the league's domestic violence and sexual assault policy. Bauer is appealing the suspension. Back to you guys at the desk. The English Premier League is approaching game week 36, which means only a couple games are left. The title has come down to Liverpool and Manchester City. Manchester City are sitting in the first place with 83 points, while Liverpool is right behind them with 82. Rounding out the Covell top four spots, we have Chelsea hop holding on to third place with 66 points and Arsenal with 63 points. Just outside the top four, Tottenham are sitting in fifth with 61 points. The Champion League semifinal had quite the dramatic finish last night with Real Madrid joining Liverpool in the Champions League final, which will take place in Paris on May 28th. Real Madrid scored two goals in the last five minutes of the semifinals against Manchester City, which propelled them to another dramatic Madrid win. The PGA Tour is heading to Maryland this week on the Potomac River for the Wales Fargo Championship. John Rahm is the expected favorite in the field this week, coming off of his latest win in Mexico last week, an amazing show of ball striking and putting. Roy McElroy is another favorite, having success at the Potomac in the past. That tournament begins today and will continue through this Sunday at the TPC Potomac just outside D.C. Time to get to the NFL. Last week, we finally got the draft, and if you bet any money on where a player was getting drafted, it's gone. It started with a somewhat unexpected pick by the Jaguars, who picked Trayvon Walker first overall. However, it was certain the Lions would take the projected number one overall pick, Aiden Hutchinson, once the Jags picked Walker. They actually picked so quickly, the NFL was mad at them. Georgia set a few different records, between having the most defensive players selected in the first round at five, and the most players drafted from one school at 15. But regardless of where any of those players were drafted, a congratulations is due for all the players who finally made the NFL. Well, Jaden, that was a that, was a, that wraps up our show. That was the it last does. one of the semester. It was the last one, man. It's been a joy. I've had nothing but fun doing this with awesome. you and all of our classmates. Everybody. Um, what was your favorite 
pick of the draft before we get out of here? I think my favorite pick of the draft had to be the Kenny Pickett because it was such a shock, man. Like, who out expected of, him? Yeah, completely out of left field. I would have picked Malik Willis, but hey, yeah. that's why I'm not a GM. Exactly. But that'll wrap up this mm-hmm. edition of Inside Broncho Sports. I'm Keewan Neal. And I'm Jaden Ford. We'll see you guys next semester. Thank you.